whenever I get a blocked nose, which has been quite recent, quite frequent recently, uh, I do notice I breathe through my mouth at night, causing my tongue to fall back into the airway. And then I just like wake up gasping for air, which is that sleep apnea, right? Sleep apnea is a very discreet medical diagnosis, but it's sleep disordered breathing. It might not hit the threshold where the insurance company is willing to call it sleep apnea, but it could definitely be sleep disordered breathing. Yeah, you're 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 struggling to breathe in your sleep for sure. Hmm. Do you use a, a a sleep tracker like Snorlab or anything to monitor oh, the yeah. amount of snore? Yeah, what's that tell you? How much Some are you snoring at night? Quiet. And then some nights is pretty loud. It just depends you know if what? I have a blocked nose. Sure. Sorry. Yeah, like what percentage are you snoring? Do you have any idea generally on average, 25, 30%, something like that? Probably something like that, yeah. And what causes your blocked noses? I have no idea. Because like, whenever I have that sort of um, bad sleep from the constant waking up, it seems to exacerbate mucus production in my nose. Mm. So like, it's like a negative feedback cycle mm -hmm. where I'll have more blocked noses leading to worse sleep, leading to yeah. more blocked noses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like more inflammation. Yeah, maybe just doing an MSE will just pull you out of that by just making your nose bigger, making you a little bit more durable in the face of a little bit of inflammation in your nose you shouldn't have blockage every time your nose acts up a little bit you should have a little bit of space there to accommodate a little bit of inflammation before you get blocked yeah so i wasn't sure if it was a uh, deviated septum problem as well mm, you know we can just sort of punt on that for now the important thing to know is that if inner nasal issue, like a tissue nasal, soft tissue nasal issue, that would be something you would correct last. That would not be something you correct right now. Right now, you do the MSE, then you see how far that gets you, and then you do any nasal stuff last. Also, any surgical, maxillary surgical stuff you would do would be before the nasal surgery as well. So we could consider something like that at the very end for you. Yeah, but all of this is tied together with your bruxism. My uh, preferred understanding of bruxism, and I find this to be the case for me, is that when I'm breathing poorly, I'm more likely to clench. Because, you know, one explanation for why we jut our lower jaw forward and clench it up into our, into our upper jaw, you know, is that we're trying to position our lower jaw forward to open up our airway. It's like our own built-in mandibular advancement device. It just so wreaks havoc more, on the teeth. So we get more air when we sleep. Yeah, exactly. It's our body's way of moving our lower jaw out of our throat so we can breathe better. Okay. Yeah, so if you can just start breathing better, if you can start breathing better, then maybe your body will stop doing that.